In the air planning phase, you'll see a row of buttons that allow you to create new air directives. The F2 to F7 buttons are for the six different types of air directives. Things like strategic bombing, which allows you to bomb a city, or air recon for aerial reconnaissance. On the right-hand side, you have the different air headquarters, which you can select, and this allows you to view their air directives, modify them, or create new air directives for the headquarter. We've already had some air directives set up by the computer, so you don't need to create new air directives. If you go back to the F1 mode, you can look around the map and look at your units. If you want to look at one of your air bases, you can double click on the air base if it's an empty hex, and it will come up with a detail screen and where you can see what units are assigned and view the individual units. And the rollover also shows you information. If the airfield is in a hex with, with friendly units, then you, you'll have to reach it by clicking on the hex and then going up to the airfield icon in the corner. Another way for you to view your aircraft on the board is to use the Control 2 hotkey. That will give you a visual representation on the map of where your Air Force uh, is strongest. Uh, the green bars represent uh, ready aircraft, the red are damaged aircraft, and blue bars would be for any reserve aircraft. There are some important screens worth noting. This screen takes you to the Air Directive Summary screen. This button takes you to the automatic air directive creation screen that we started the turn with. You can turn this off if you don't want it to show up at the beginning of the turn automatically. Let's go back to the map and let's make a few changes to our air directives. The easiest way to do this is go to go to the air directive summary screen. Click on the air directive you want to look at. And in this case, we'll look at the Tactical Air Force ground attack mission. And as you can see on the map, it shows this air directive. And the green hexes show that they're going to be escorts. There are two ways to change the, the target in the target box. One would be to click here and pick a new target hex. And the other would be to click on the area size. And I'm going to make this a, a slightly smaller box with a two hex radius. And this area here contains the information for the air directive. And you can make any changes over here that you'd like to, and they'll take effect immediately. This shows that there are no groups specifically assigned to this mission. It's on automatic and that there are 380 uh, bomber aircraft available and 112 escorts available for this directive to use for any missions generated. When you're happy with your changes, you can click on the air summary screen again and find another air directive you want to change. Here I'll select the Malta Air Command's Air Superiority Directive and I'm going to change this so that it targets and covers the British areas. Another way to leave this screen is to click on the air headquarter on the right and it brings up all your Air Force headquarters and notice we're in air superiority mode and this is how we would set up a new air superiority directive. So I'm going to set up a new Air Superiority Air Directive for the Malta Air Command. And to start off, I have to pick a target hex. So let's pick one over Gala. I can change the size of the box and so create a target box here. And all the values that are set up are set up from based on the Air Force's Air Doctrine. And I can go ahead and leave it in automatic 
as far as the aircraft assignments, or I can pick specific units. So here I'll assign specific air groups to this mission. And now, since it's a new directive being set up, I have to confirm it, or else it won't stay. And now we're set, and that's how you set up a new directive. Now I want to talk just a bit about Naval Patrol, which is how you take control of sea hexes. There are some units that are set up to automatically fly Naval Patrol only. So they'll be flying out every turn without you having to set up an air directive for them. There are other units that are going to be automatically flying Naval Patrols if they're not set up specifically uh, to be involved in another air directive and aren't and don't end up being used by other air directives that are set for automatic, then they could fly. These will show up in the CR screen in blue. Now, if you don't want that to happen, you can go to the Air Doctrine screen. And so let's say we don't want the Strategic Air Force to be flying automatic naval patrols. we we'll go turn that off. We'll go back and take a look, and you'll see the Strategic Air Force planes are no longer set for that auto naval patrol. When you're finished setting up your air directives, you're ready to start the air execution phase. In order to do this, you have to be back in the map mode, F1. Now be aware that this button controls the level of detail you'll see in the execution phase. The default level is low, but you can toggle uh, anywhere from none to, to high, and we'll go back to the low detail level. And then notice that this button here allows you to show the interdiction levels on the map. So I'll end the planning phase and begin the air execution phase. At this point, air missions will be created automatically based on the air directives and will begin to be resolved. Information is shown in this window in the bottom right. At the low level of detail, you won't see any combat windows just the flash of the icons indicating various air activities taking place. If you toggle on the air interdiction levels, you'll see shading indicating contested sea hexes and enemy controlled sea hexes in red. The hexes that aren't shaded are friendly controlled. At the end of the air execution phase, you're brought to the summary screen where you can see information about what happened during the air execution phase. And for each directive, you can see how many missions were flown, the number of bomber and fighter sorties flown, lost aircraft damaged, and losses to the enemy. You can break this down further and get a look at, for each actual mission flown, what the target type was, the planes engaged, and losses, and the effect on the target. This brings us to the ground movement and combat phase and the end of this video. In the next videos, I will cover amphibious landings and airborne assaults.